Welcome to Spread, Spread the, the Word. word. Julia's going to go ching, first. Ching, 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 oh, ching, oh, ching, 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 ching. Cheers. Cheers. I am going first. I do apologize. I'll be up front. I'm not <laughs> even to page 100 yet. Hmm. However, Rouge by Mona Awad as, yeah, I agree. I We should probably figure out how to really There's only so many names. names. Awad, Awad, maybe? Awad. Awad is probably. Awad. Awad is yeah, probably. I don't think Awad is it. <laughs> Mona Awad, who wrote Bunny. That one I got the idea that was maybe like a little edgy contemporary. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one, Rouge, is still contemporary, but definitely playing with the, the Snow White fairy tale. So the main character, Mirabelle, who goes by Belle, so she uh, is uh, the daughter of a single mother. Um, her mother's name is Hope, Noelle, Noelle, and like very French, very cagey about her father's history also. It seems like her father is like Eastern European, like a darker man, maybe mm. a traveler or whatever. And her mother is very fair, but she's darker uh, skinned. And her mother's very like uh, obsessed with the mirror. It has a lot of beauty products mm. and is always <clears throat> talking to Belle about like her appearance. And she owns a, a dress shop in Southern California. The book starts, her mother has died, but as an adult, she's moved to Montreal, Canada, um, is working at, at I guess it seems like a department store, but she's working like the beauty department. And she watches these YouTube videos of this like makeup guru lady who's always like sort of telling you know, her viewers how to look younger and stuff. So, so Belle wears a lot of makeup, puts on a lot of beauty products, and, like cover up her darker skin. Mm -hmm. Definitely lightening her features with foundation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and clearly feels like she needs to put it on to go out in the world. So her, when her mother dies, she comes back for the funeral and is obviously having trouble processing the death of the mother who it seems like maybe a bit of a narcissist is that sort of like very overbearing figure in her life. So it's hard for her to figure out like what to do, I think. She finally is going through her mother's house to pack everything up. She finds a pair of shoes and then the shoes take her. She says the shoes take her to this place on the ocean called La Maison de Meduse. She's like, what is this place? And she's like walking into it. And the lady who greets her is sort of like, you've come. And she's like, you know, I'm coming. Like she can't seem to like figure out how these how this is all happening but also can't seem to be like no like can't seem to like demure she's just being like yes I'm here like it's like <laughs> some sort of spell is over her kind of and then she gets inside and it seems like there's this big high fashion party going on and people keep talking to her about the journey and she's like got the champagne that's been colored red or something and someone's like wishing her well on her journey and stuff and it's, oh yeah like super weird very cult <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah and she's like okay like finally she sees something that's like about a treatment and it, she's like okay this is a spa this is a spa mother came to and it's like that's what this is and it just gets weirder and weirder from there <laughs> So I'm not interesting. Yeah, I'm like this is creepy and bizarre. <laughs> Sounds I great. Do you want to figure out what's happening? Yeah. yeah, and I was like, also, I think both Kristen and Danielle, plus a lot of people, yeah, <laughs> will like it. Yeah. So unclear what Belle's journey is going to be, but it is definitely a horror tinged gothic fairy tale. Oh, I yeah. love all of that. <laughs> I got an audiobook that comes out this month called Sun Damage premise is that these two people, uh, they're, they're re part of the reason I'm bad with names right now is because they are grifters, and so they change their names. Mm, that makes it especially tricky. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> the, I think that she starts, I think they start the book as Elle and Stephen. Um, they are in uh, the south of France, in a beautiful resort <clears throat> town, and they, they've been together for years, and not together like romantically they've been like a, a crime duo mm. for many years a crime duo, a crime duo. Mm. and uh <laughs> they are they basically go they hop around europe they find different marks and they don't outright steal but they grift they get rich people to cover them uh, basically and yeah. then of course they do steal here mm. and there yeah. but they don't like it's not like they do heists yeah, yeah. so like the anna what's her name character yes yeah anna anna um, oh, shit. So earlier, she this. had the many accents in one. She yeah. had. She was the real lady. The New York socialite. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anna. 
Shit. I do not remember her last name. I don't either. remember either. She's so fancy. She was Russian. Maybe. 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 <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Anyways, anyways, anyways. But, yes. So, yeah, so, so they've identified a mark at a place. They, you know, there's all kinds of reasons for them to believe that she's very wealthy. She is. Uh, they get her to cover a bunch of bills. One thing leads to another. Something unfortunate happens to Lulu. The protagonist takes her life. Oh, interesting. Because also, they bear a striking resemblance to each other. Okay. They're both, in, in that they're both, like, kind of, like, mousy nondescript blondes she like kind of slips into her life so okay. she takes her life like takes her identity or, or kills her and sorry she takes her identity <laughs> ali slash ellie uh is not like super fond of steven like they are of a very abuse abusive like emotionally abusive like at one point he she like sh he shaves her head for her saying his n actual name in public excuse me yeah not great interesting it's not a good relationship so she's like anxious to get out of there she finds this out she's like she's gonna just try to assume this woman's life oh, okay i like it yeah so i did a cookbook this month which i haven't done a cookbook in a while, a while yeah I've... but i saw this um cookbook called chili chris <laughs> some of you know some of you don't depending on your closest you know, closest to me <laughs> but i love chili chris <laughs> it is my favorite condiment so I was very excited. And this book is, it has like three different kinds of chili crisps. Um, there's a nutty chili crisp, just a blanket chili crisp, and you can put anything. And the third one is a Trader Joe's dupe. And so I've made the regular chili crisp and the nutty chili crisp. Um, and a lot of the recipes are kind of like, you know, tofu with chili crisp, which is pretty standard. And then there are some recipes like the one that I brought today that are a little more unique mm -hmm. uses of it. So I brought caramel chocolate shortbread it has the nutty chili crisp in both the caramel layer and the chocolate layer so we're gonna try it all right it is good yeah can you taste the chili crisp good. Settle. Can I taste the chili crisp? on yeah. the back it's on the back that's probably like the first or second best caramel i've had oh thank you i questioned if it was even caramel at all mm. and <laughs> consistency wise well i think it was yeah. yeah excellent it's the condensed milk kind i learned today that there are many different caramels mm when I was frantically Googling is, is this caramel. <laughs> so yeah, so those were great. Um, the other thing that I made, so I said I made two chili crisps, had the nutty chili crisp, and then I made, I think it's called standard or savory chili crisp or something, which Julia and I have been eating. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> a lot. Put it on of, everything. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> oh yeah, it's oh. so good. So I made the savory chili crisp, chili crisp. That will be a staple for sure. So from that, I made the chili crisp roast, roast chicken. It's just like roasted vegetables, a spatchcocked chicken on top with like a fourth of the cup of chili crisp. Mm. And it was, it was really good. So yeah, it was excellent. Highly recommend. Okay. Well, thank you for turning in to spread the word. We appreciate you all. Let us know what you think of these books and what you're reading now. And we'll see you next month. Yeah. Bye. Bye.